In 2011, and on a budget of $70,000, Mike Flanagan wrote, edited, and directed Absentia. He funded the film via a Kickstarter page and planned tediously around his own environment to create as much as possible for as cheaply as possible with what he had available at hand. Using a cast of friends, a high-definition camera he already owned, and utilizing a tunnel across the street from his home, all the while having no lights or dollies and very minimal access to special effects, with the idea of shooting on weekends simply to kickstart everyone's careers, Flanagan created a horrific and dark, terror-filled genre masterpiece. One that holds solid over multiple watches and effectively and masterfully reveals a deep and dark world. All while keeping most elements in your imagination and only revealing the monster of the film for very brief moments. A quote from Flanagan reveals Flanagan was heavily influenced by H.P. Lovecraft and fascinated by his concept of the old ones of ancient forces so alien to our experience that comprehending them is nearly impossible to our limited terms. I always imagined that the creature at work in absentia is a small inhabitant of something much bigger, just a cockroach in one of the cracks of a truly Lovecraftian realm that only barely overlaps our reality. They're just little pests in that realm, but utterly horrifying and inexplicable by our standards. This cockroach Flanagan speaks of resides in what the victims of the film call the underneath. And if you are a fan of Stranger Things and are aware of the concepts of the upside down within that work, Absentia's underneath is a very similar idea, but one whose definitions and imagery is left entirely to our imagination. The tunnel where the monster seemingly resides acts as the entrance, the creature itself being the only thing capable of entering and exiting as well as pulling its victims through with it. The film effectively allows its lead characters to breathe and develop until you actually care about what happens to them. Something that is often lacking in the genre and much of the film deals with the trauma of disappeared loved ones, filling out missing person reports, absentia reports, death certificates, and drug abuse. What Flanagan has managed to create with such a small budget is in my opinion truly monumental. Absentia defines itself as unique and well executed within the genre and stands today as a great example of what can be accomplished when it is done right and we are left to develop much of the terror and details of the film within our own minds. This decision, partly due to the budget, but mostly as a directional choice, was intended by Flanagan, leaving the majority of the creature's motives, features, rules and definitions almost entirely to our imagination's design as we are usually only shown the results of its fixations and madness. We will dive into why this film has defined itself as a master amongst a field of incompetent and competent entries within the genre as well as dissect the plot, characters, vague features and rich history of the bug-like monster that dwells within the bright and darkly lit urban environment of absentia. Before we do, please hit that like and subscribe and ring the bell. It is the only way I can grow. And without any further ado, let us dive into the horrors of absentia. Plot Synopsis Trisha, played by Courtney Bell, a single pregnant woman, finally accepts her husband's death after missing for seven years and prepares to declare him dead in absentia. Her sister Callie, played by Katie Parker, is a former drug addict who comes to stay with her. Together they drudge through the tedium and emotions of the proceedings. Callie begins jogging and one morning while running through the creepy tunnel across the street, comes across a homeless person who is surprised she can see him. She later drops food off near the tunnel, after which she finds a pile of metal objects outside her door. She places them at the tunnel and runs into a young man dropping off a moving bag in the same area, who warns her not to do as she is doing. Later she finds the objects in her bed and calls the police. When Trisha finally decides to go out on a date with the would-be father of her child, the police officer who has been working the case for years, Daniel appears, making his way from the tunnel, surprised they can see him. He exists in many ways as the only definition we have of the creature, 
the traumas experienced are only hinted at, as doctors find evidence of malnourishment, dehydration, physical abuse, and bones in his stomach. Daniel is incapable of explaining his situation, but later reveals to Callie that it is here, as Callie watches a creature pull Daniel in and out of the walls, out of the house, to the tunnel, and finally through the walls of the tunnel. Callie's story is met with rejection and anger, as she has apparently began using drugs again. Callie attempts to prove the story to Trisha, but Trisha's cognitive dissonance allows her to laugh off hundreds of missing persons cases throughout the ages, in the very place where the tunnel exists. The homeless man, who has been identified as Walter, shows up dead, twisted and broken, near the entrance of the tunnel, and it is discovered his son has been stealing pets and placing them in bags near the entrance of the tunnel. Later, a clicking noise can be heard from the darkness. The monster appears, pulls Trisha out of the house, and takes Trisha through the walls of the tunnel. Callie is as always met with anger, and police doubt her story, believing she is relapsing. They assume a drug deal has gone bad, or a similar situation occurred. In the climax of the film, Callie enters the tunnel and declares a trade, seemingly her for Trisha, to which the creature pushes Trisha's unborn fetus out of the walls. Callie screams and runs for the exit, and is knocked out of her shoe and pulled into the underneath. Cast. The characters are played exceptionally well by a cast that would go on to work in several movies afterward, with the exception of Doug Jones being the only professional actor at the time. The main characters, Callie and Trisha, are both very believable and have a sister dynamic that is portrayed exceptionally well. As the cast develop and breathe life into the characters, you become familiar with them, their situations, and you are given the chance to develop emotions for them. Both detectives are acted well. Justin Gordon plays Detective Lonergan, while Dave Levine plays Detective Ryan Mallory, effectively showing his obvious frustrations with Daniel's return and his inabilities to keep Trisha and his baby safe as they more and more break his character down. Daniel, portrayed by Morgan Peter Brown, is played especially well. I feel an honest fear for him as he gazes at the tunnel and attempts to explain his situation to Trisha, only to pee himself. He also performs a variety of creepy scenes, as he haunts Trisha in and out of her waking life from within the underneath. These scenes are done exceptionally well. He is a truly creepy performer when he wants to be. The acting in general all deserves a round of applause. Imagery. For being made on a budget of $70,000, it may come as a surprise that this is one of the areas the film shines the brightest. Even though you only get glimpses of the monster and moments of interactions and violence, these moments are done exceptionally well and give you just enough visuals for your imagination to fill in the gaps. And this is where the mind and the power of the Lovecraftian design comes into play. Quoting Flanagan himself, we find the less is more aesthetic is certainly something that was intentional. I really believe it makes for a more frightening experience if the viewer is an imaginative person. And that this fundamentally comes from Lovecraft himself. Lovecraft knew when to be explicit and when to give people just enough to really drive them crazy. He was so good at planting seeds, of letting us realize that the horror we glimpsed was only a tiny fraction of a much bigger picture, sometimes a much bigger creature, that was truly beyond our comprehension. And this is, in my opinion, why the film is so masterfully done. Flanagan effectively plants a seed of a monster in your mind, one that's detail, motivations, and behavior is ultimately up to you to design. Using practical special effects and only a small amount of CGI and paid-for effects, Flanagan has created a horrifically original creature and mythology that surrounds it, one that I still don't truly know what it looks like. Our only clues are the few moments of the creature and Daniel's descriptions while he refutes those in Billy Goat's Gruff, saying the entity is more insect-like and has skin like a silverfish. An example of the genius applied to this film and the practicality of it, as well as the costs, would be the final shot. As the detective looks to the tunnel, 
believing he sees a twisted form of Callie watching him. We see that Callie is indeed alive, in the underneath, and watching the detective. As she peers towards him, a clicking noise sputters out, and two long fingers grasp her shoulder. Visually, it is amazing. Yet it was done by tapping her back with two twigs found on the ground. Genius, beautiful, horrific, and epic, and essentially, as a special effect, free. Making it real. One of my favorite parts of the movie is when Callie hits the internet and starts researching her area for missing people in a well-done example of the internet deep dive trope. They use what appears to be a Wikipedia page as she delves into the citations and strikes gold, finding a rich history of missing people within the area, learning that the tunnel itself was once a sinkhole where people would go missing. Tons of stories are cited, each adding weight and reality to the situation. As Trisha laughs it all off, Callie goes on to explain matter, dark matter, and how we really do not understand the nature of the universe itself, and how countless cultures have had tales of ancient underworld beasts, stealing people and enslaving and brutalizing them. Tales of underground worlds and labyrinths of caves and tunnels full of the missing. For me, Having gone down similar rabbit holes of internet insanity, it is done especially well and adds a great element of realism to a film that is obvious fiction. Overall, the world of Absentia is dark, horrific, and extremely creepy, all whilst residing almost entirely within your own mind. The creature is only shown for a few seconds, and its intentions and most of the film's arcs and directions are left very much to your own design. You may well need a vivid imagination to find this film truly horrific. For me, this film is epic, and with a budget of $70,000, performs grandly when set against big budget horror romps. I recommend it to anyone who enjoys the horror genre. There is a great chance you will find it both unique and genuinely scary. Thank you so much for diving into the darkly lit, atmospheric, Lovecraftian based, absentia with me. Please hit that like and subscribe and ring the bell. I have new videos coming out all the time. And if you enjoyed this, you will likely enjoy them as well. And until then, keep sleepwalking, my friends.